Good afternoon. I'm so glad that you are all able to come today. My name is Alicia Edwards, and I have the privilege this year of serving as a chair of the board of trustees for Morrison Academy. And like many of you, I have three children in the, the Morrison system. I have a high schooler, I have a middle schooler, and a son in elementary school. So the education of my children is a very important topic to me, and I know it is to you today. I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to come and discuss this very important topic of a high school. Um, we, as the board, would like to offer a high school option on more of our campuses, and that's what we want to talk about today. Is it a viable option? And so today, uh, the purpose of this is that you, as parents, can better understand what the board is proposing, and we, as trustees and administrators, can answer as many questions that you have. So today, in our time together, we will be presenting that information. Um, As you know, the vision of Morrison Academy is that every student will experience a quality, biblically integrated education so that each one will be equipped to impact their world for Christ. And this is one of the lenses that the board has looked at, um, a quality, biblically integrated education. And we, this is one of the lenses that we need to look at to see if this is an viable option. A high school is a viable option on any of our campuses. Another lens that we are looking at is, is our core values, that Christ is central to Morrison Academy's values. Morrison Academy's core values are to know the truth, to pursue excellence in student learning, to educate the whole person, to fulfill the Great Commission, to partner with parents, and to be a caring community. So these are several of the things that the board has looked at. And if we are to offer a high school option, we must know that it will be a quality, biblically integrated program that holds to our core values. So after reviewing these things and collaborating with administration, the board has authorized this um, motion to unanimously authorize the administration to explore the addition of grades 10 through 12 on the Kaohsiung and Taipei campuses of Morrison Academy. And over the years, the board has reviewed this issue several times. If you remember, in 1996, we added ninth grade to the Bethany campus and followed by adding ninth grade in Kaohsiung at the completion of this new campus in 2000 because we knew we could provide a quality, biblically integrated program. Today, in our technologically advanced world, we think this is a possibility again. And so you may be thinking, especially those at Bethany, how is this possible? And while it isn't in the immediate future, the board and administration have diligently been pursuing options in the Taipei area. And we ask that you would continue to pray with us that God would provide a campus in the Taipei area that would meet more of our needs. And you may also be asking, well, what kind of program would, this be pro would we be providing? Today, the scenario that we are discussing is maintaining our current high school program in Taichung and adding two local high schools in Kaohsiung and Bethany. The principals on each of the campuses will be going into more details about what this will look like on each of the campuses in a few minutes. But today I'm just here to say that as a board, we would like to hear from you before making this very important decision. In a few minutes, we'll be breaking up into a few groups um, for some question and answer time. There will be two parent groups, one Mandarin and one English, and there will also be a staff discussion group. If you are a student here today, and we would ask that you would join your parent in whichever group they go to. At the conclusion of the discussion, each person will be given four colored dots that we would ask that you would place next to the area where you would want the board to consider 
the most. You can see that over there, but it's in each of the areas where you will be discussing. So some of the questions that you may have, but we are asking you as a board um, to share what you think as we are making this decision uh, as Board of Trustees, which ones would you like us to consider most heavily in this, dis this, dis this very important decision? So I just, again, I thank you so much for coming. We value, we value your partnership. It is only together that we can have a great school. And so today I'm just gonna ask Tim to share a little bit more about this issue. So here in, uh, here in Kaohsiung today, I've talked to several parents. And the question that I keep hearing is, will MAK and Bethany have a good high school? The emphasis on, is it going to be good? Morrison's never done a high school in Kaohsiung and in Taipei. That's the question, right? I see heads around the room nodding here. Yeah. Smiles. Yeah. It's kind of like when we go and buy a car. I say, is that car good? How does the salesman answer you? <laughs> okay. If it's a Volvo, he's going to say the safety is good because of their track record. And if it's a Toyota, they're going to say the resale value is good because of their track record. So that's how I want to answer. Is MAK's and Bethany's high school, could it be good? Let's look at the track record. What are the existing quality indicators about Morrison High School? How many of you have had your children attending a Morrison Taichung High School? Quite a few hands here. If you talk to any of them, I guarantee you, you will get many positive stories, many positive testimonies, every single one. And I didn't pay them <laughs> because it's quality. Just like the Toyota salesman can say for sure, the resale value will be good. Taichung High School's first graduating class was 1956. That's a long time ago. That was when I was one year old, and I'm old. <laughs> so there's been thousands of Morrison graduates. They've also gone to the universities of their choice. Morrison has prepared them for selective universities. Um, there's some evidence of that recently in this brochure. Many of you here in Kaohsiung have already seen it. It's the class of 13 profile. And in the back, there's lists and lists of small print of universities that recent Morrison graduates have gone to. Quite impressive. We have amazing students. So that's some more evidence. Morrison knows how to prepare you for university. Part of that is a very well-developed university guidance program, university and career. Um, in Taizong, they have, from 10th grade on, um, an extensive university preparation program to talk with parents as well as students to make sure that you stay on track toward getting into that university of your choice. We have a solid record there. But almost any good high school could promise the first three. But how many high schools can promise a quality indicator of graduate character? You know, we have many alumni. Almost every week I run into alumni that have just come back home to Morrison to visit. And they tell how they got into the university of their choice. And they tell how they've been successful in their careers. But, well, how do I say this? There's many people that get a good degree, even from Harvard, and they get the job they want, but they don't succeed. Why? Because they weren't trained in character. Maybe the parents trained them in character, but the school didn't partner with the parents in that. I think that's the most 
strongest quality indicator that Morrison has to offer you, that in Taipei and in Gaosho, we can deliver. Okay, Guar guarantee. There's lots of things that I could guarantee that would happen in Taipei and Kaohsiung High School. But I've only listed three today. Many of you are concerned about teachers, and you should be, because teachers are the central part of a quality education. So in Taipei and Kaohsiung, we would definitely have Christian teachers that are experienced and certified in, that, in their subject area. Now, many international smaller high schools, like Morrison, have teachers that are teaching outside of their certification area. But in Morrison, 100% teaching inside certification area. It's been like that for a long time. Morrison's been accredited since the 70s. They're one of the first schools in Adams to do that because we have the quality teachers. Second, guarantee. University application and career counseling. Um, now, in the first year, 10th grade in Kaohsiung next year, if we have 10th grade, we're not going to be able to have a full-time certified university counselor here to help you. But the Taichung campus, has, they're eager to come down and bring their program down here so that your students will receive the same kind of service that the Taichung students do for 10th grade. And then, hopefully in the future, as the number of students in high school grows here, we can get a certified university guidance counselor here on this campus. But I guarantee you, we will do this well. And of course, the third thing is the character building and the moral values that you want your child to have, because that's what's going to pay off in life. So I could add many more things. We could talk about the caring community. We could talk about um, good facilities. Talk about a handsome principal. <laughs> but I think those three are the main quality characteristics that you want to have guaranteed. So we asked the question, will MAK and Bethany have a good high school? But I think there's a more important question for you today. It's very similar. Will MAK and Bethany High School be good for my child, or be good for you, a student. See, for some of you, the Taichung boarding program is a good option for you. Because yeah, you just heard the board chairman say, we're going to continue that program. The board really wants to give a choice to parents. Um, now, I've visited many boarding schools around the world, and I'm confident that Morrison's boarding program is not just a quality, world-class program. I think it's the best in the world. So if you choose that option, that's a good option. There's about 70 students in each class. There's a full range of music and art and athletics uh, programming there. But that's just one choice. That used to be the only choice for a Morrison high school. Now the board really would like to offer you three high school choices in Taiwan. Taipei, Kaohsiung, and Taichung. But wouldn't it be nice if we could just take Taichung Morrison's program, put it on the photocopier, and plop it down here in Kaohsiung and another one up in Taipei? <coughs> We'd all be happy. We don't have enough property. This campus here is only about one-sixth the size as Taichung. And we don't have enough qualified students to do that. So what would be the vision for a high school here in Kaohsiung or later on in Taipei? Well, the board is confident that we can provide a quality local high school, 25 students, maximum 25 students per grade, with arts, and athletic options depending on the interest of those students. Um, in order to, most of the teachers would be on campus, face-to-face -face teaching, just like Morrison's always done. But we're realizing that students need to have online learning experiences because that's 
what's happening in universities, that's what's happening in the future. I just visited a school in uh, Malaysia, like ours, and they have a graduation requirement of taking at least one online class during high school in order to graduate. I'm going to recommend that to the board. So, Taichung campus would also have to take at least one online class. Because online education has changed so much in the last 10 years. It's amazing. I, um, so in Kaohsiung and in Taipei, every student would take at least one online class elective each semester. But the main point here is that the board wants to give choices to parents. We're not going to try and say one is better than the other. Maybe for your family, for, your, for you as a student, maybe a local high school, <coughs> staying at home, save some money, um, and staying with your friends, continuing those relationships in a quality local high school, maybe that's the best for you. Maybe some of you going and having a boarding experience and more arts and athletic programs, maybe that's the best for you. The board just wants to be able to give you a choice. Finally, you might ask, what's the schedule? When could this happen? Uh, the board chair just said that in January 22nd, the board will make a decision whether to go ahead with 10th grade in Kaohsiung next year. That's August 2013. There's enough space above the gym. There's one extra room there. We could start 10th grade next year with the existing facilities. The following year, we'd need more facilities to add grade 11, and then we would build a four more classrooms, probably over where the basketball courts are. There's no extra fees for that. It's just part of the capital fees that you've been paying for years. And then the first graduating class for MAK would be May 2016, May, June 2016. How does that sound? Wow. Pretty good, huh? Right. See a lot of nodding heads. <laughs> well, how long does Bethany have to wait to have a graduating class? Well, we're still negotiating on property, but there's a property about the same size as Kaohsiung's property in Taipei that we may be able to lease. Then we could start that first year in that bigger property in Taipei, we would start 10th grade and follow the same sequence that we've done, we would have done here in Kaohsiung. So I'll let the principals on each campus tell you more about how this board decision would affect your family and your campus. This will be the end of the video, right? So thank you very much, all of you, for joining us today. Well, as uh, Mrs. Edwards and Mr. McGill mentioned, thank you for taking time out. I know, I know it's been kind of a tricky day with conferences, and some of you might have had to make two trips and come back, or you've been here all afternoon, uh, but hopefully you're able to get a chance to talk to each other and mingle and and spend some time here. Um, but this, uh, in terms of system-wide timing, it seemed like this was uh, the best time for it. So I do thank you for inconveniences that caused. Um, just to start off, I do want to thank uh, Mr. McGill and Mrs. Mrs. Edwards just for the tremendous support that they've shown. It, it really is such a blessing and a benefit to be part of a system like what we have here. Um, and as you know, we, we just celebrated our 60 years here in Taiwan. And, as Mr. McGill so well articulated, we've got a real legacy of uh, quality and experience, and, and we've really built up a reputation. It, I, it always, uh, I know Christians shouldn't feel proud, but I always feel proud when people come and say, oh yeah, we've heard of Morrison, it's such a good school, and, and we, it's, it's got such a good reputation, and that's, that's what 60 years of quality would do for you. And I really appreciate how um, uh, Mr. McGill has, and uh, Mrs. Edwards and the board have worked hard to, to um, really develop that system thinking. I know in the past, uh, there used to be a, a kind of a thought, a perception that Kaohsiung and Taipei are kind of the, the ugly sisters in the, in the <laughs> school, you know, and, and, and we, we don't want to bother them too much and they'll do their own thing, and, and, but Taichung is the school. That's what Morrison really is, you know. But, 
they've really worked hard to eliminate that and really um, have us as a system. And I think this, their willingness to look at this decision and, and to seriously consider adding a high school, I think that's just, again, speaks volume of how, how we are a system and how we support each other and how we are um, there to help one another out. So I think that's, that's been really important in this whole process. So thank you again for taking the time and energy to really explore this option. And, and I think another way where Morrison has really grown is just including the parents in a decision like this. As uh, Mrs. Edwards mentioned, one of our core values is partnering with parents. And, and I would say this is an area where Morrison has really grown in, in, well, in the 13 years I've been here. And really seeking the parents for input and, and listening to your ideas and, and trying to uh, understand what you value and what you want in a school. And I think just having a forum like this, an opportunity for you to share your concerns and share what you think the board really needs to consider, I think that's a really important part of the process. So thank you for being here for that. Okay, so I just did share a little bit about Morrison uh, High School and what that could look like at MAK. Um, we've already talked about all this. Um, uh, you know that we are a quality school. We've got over 50 years of high school experience and just being accredited um, over this time, um, we've really built a reputation, not just in Taiwan, but uh, for universities. They, when they see the Morrison name, they recognize the name. And I think that's being part of the system. That's another one of the benefits that we can enjoy. Now, um, we've already talked about a lot of this stuff too, so I'm going to skip over a lot of this. Um, just the idea of having 25 students maximum, five to six core courses taught face-to-face, -face, and I'll, I'll give a little more details on that in a minute, and also having a valuable online learning experience. Now, this is something I do want to touch on a little bit here. It's just this idea of co-curriculars, because I've heard a lot of questions just about... <laughs> I've heard a lot of questions like, what's going to be available for sports and music and drama, and I think those are all really important for a high school experience. Um, and as Mr. McGill mentioned, a lot of that will depend on student interest and what, what they really want. But, but there is so much to building an, an academic resume, if you want to call it that. An academic resume of what universities are looking for when students are applying. And, and sometimes, sports is an important thing, but you probably know not, not all kids can play at a varsity sports level, right? But we want to be able to provide other things that will round out that academic resume besides just courses. Because the courses, that's, that's actually a pretty easy thing. We've got the curriculum, we've got the textbooks, we can find teachers, but then it's those other things like the leadership experiences and um, uh, work experiences, service opportunities, even missions trips, those sort of things. Those are sort of the type of things that, that we can seek to offer, again, based on, of course, student interest. And, and, and I think by being a smaller school, that works to our advantage because then we can really hone in on what you are interested in and how we can provide those things. Just as an example, World Scholars Cup, right? That's something we've really been able to specialize in because we know our kids are smart kids. We're smarter than the other kids, right? So we can, we can hone in on that and capitalize on it because we know this is your strength. We might not win varsity sports or whatever, but we can capitalize on those strengths. And those are the type of things by, even if it's a smaller school, we can provide those opportunities to round out the academic resume. So you're probably interested in the details. Um, now, of course, this is all still very... Uh, prelim preliminary, we're just in the beginning process because it's not even a guarantee we'll have a high school yet. But these are the type of things we have to be thinking about in case the board does pass that decision. And one thing I'm thankful for is um, um, I think God has really blessed us just at this point in time that, that many of our teachers have high school teaching experience already. Um, so like uh, Mr. Torkson, he's taught high school English before. 
Mrs. Griffin, she's taught high school algebra and high school math before. Mr. Tam has taught high school science before. So we're already positioned to, ha we have teachers in place who are certified in their areas of specialization with experience. And these are teachers we already know and trust. And of course, we're going to have to shift the load so we don't overburden teachers because we don't want to burn teachers out. But we're positioned to already be able to um, have people in place to teach those core academic courses. Of course, that's just for 10th grade. And as we go on, we're going to have to add staff. And we, we can't just keep adding courses to the same people, right? <laughs> Mr. Torgerson, Mr. Tam, you guys can teach seven classes, right? <laughs> OK? But it's a start. And it, it's neat that it's happening at this point in time when we already have a lot of these key people in position. Um, now, uh, one of the things that had, um, some people wonder about is, well, is it going to be the same as, or same's not a good word, consistent with Taijung? And I think Mr. McGill did a really good job of sharing about how, because of our values, because of who we are as a school, this, this is what we're striving for regardless. Uh, but some of the things that we do have is the curriculum, okay? That's, that's one thing that many schools don't even have. The teachers just kind of teach whatever. But because we have the experience, we do have um, a well-established curriculum. We have uh, these things called unit plans. If you're not sure what that is, it's just kind of taking the curriculum and uh, breaking it down to show, uh, to give teachers ideas of how to teach it. And then common assessments. Um, assessment is a fancy word for tests, I guess. But um, teachers across the system would be using these unit plans, using these assessments, and then they, they get together and they talk about, are we grading this the same? How do you use this rubric? Um, you gave this a, a three out of four. I gave it a four out of four. What's the difference? And, and that type of teacher collaboration is another benefit we can enjoy by being part of a system. We can talk to each other. So, um, going on from that, so eventually, as we go on, we would, of course, add all the core courses, and then another big question is AP, um, and um, uh, because we want to have a consistent system across the Morrison high schools, then we would, uh, at, a, uh, at least, offer the, the five standard AP classes which are offered at um, Taichung. Um, but this is where it kind of gets exciting, is with the online electives. And uh, as Mr. McGill mentioned, this, this whole field of online education has just blown up in the last 10 years. And, and what, what some of us might imagine online school to, it's so much different than even just five years ago. Because these... these um, there's, there's more and more people, or more and more organizations, which are creating these online courses. So the demand is going up, and, and with demand, that increases the quality and, and the rigor available in these courses. Now, um, what we're envisioning here is maximum one or two online courses per year. So they would have all of the core courses, so that's five or six, and then, um, the electives, so one or two if you don't want a study hall, okay, those could be online electives. And this is, this could be really key in, if we go back to the idea of academic resume, how we can really specialize and choose courses that can show universities that, that, uh, that there's something unique and special about you as a student. Um, now with, with these online, um, um, schools, there's just hundreds of courses available. And this is where, if you know there's something that you are really passionate about, something you're really interested about, you can select those courses to really specialize your academic resume so that you are well positioned to apply for whatever program in whatever university you're looking for. That can include everything from extra AP classes, potential GPA boosters, or um, if you are really interested in uh, journalism, okay, or psychology, or economics, 
you can choose these courses strategically, and, and these are courses which wouldn't be available to you otherwise. But being able to do that, that would really be able to help you um, um, specialize again your academic resume. Okay? And the key again is it, it would be one or two per year, because we still recognize the value of face-to-face -face instruction, but also the value of um, the choices available online. And, and in these last couple years, um, just in really researching online schools, I've been amazed at how, how, um, how thorough they are. There's uh, these courses, they typically have an online teacher which you have to communicate with regularly, whether it's through email or Skype or whatever. Usually you have to call them every week or every two weeks. There's a set schedule that you have to follow and as you complete the lessons, it checks it off. And there's usually lots of um, practice and assessments. And then kind of like with our power school, you kind of follow the grades online. Now, one benefit of doing it in school is we would have a local online coordinator here as well. And this person, they would be able to keep track of the students, making sure they're not falling behind, answering questions. Uh, it's also nice if there's multiple people taking the same online course, they can form study groups and work together and help each other out. And then the teacher can help them with that as well. Okay. Now, this is probably the question that's on all our mind, right? The reason we want to do this is to send our kids to university, overseas typically. And that's why you're sending your kids here. And uh, as Mr. McGill mentioned, uh, because we're part of a system, we have access to to the uh, Taijo High School Guidance Center and the many resources they've developed over the years. The databases they have with information about the different universities and what their application um, procedures are, um, different tracking systems, different inventories which you can use to find out what your strengths and what your interests are. Um, also, I've been talking with their guidance counselor up there and he is, is saying how he can regularly make visits down here at least at the beginning and even throughout to help us with that process. Um, and then on top of all that, um, looking for opportunities again to build that academic resume, uh, giving opportunities for leadership, for service, for co-curricular opportunities. Uh, this is an important thing which I think many parents wonder about is just will there be SAT and, and ACT and PSAT, all those different test preparations. I think being, once again, a, a smaller school, I think that's an advantage. We can, we can see if this is a real need and target that and offer these sort of extra um, opportunities for students. And then, of course, as Mr. McGill mentioned, the goal is to eventually have a guidance counselor here, um, but um, it would all, of course, uh, we would be able to meet the needs of the students and help them through that process. All right. Okay. I'm going to kind of breeze through this, but, but um, in talking with, with um, the guidance counselor up in Taichung, um, he was just going over with me, in, in the different grades in high school, what are, the, what are the important things to really focus on as you're preparing for um, high school and graduation and for university. And I think um, these are things that we are aware of and we want to be able to deliver to students who are in a, a MAK high school uh, if we are able to have one. So the, in ninth grade, what they really focus on is study skills, having kids be ready for or, um, the high school career, and that includes different um, uh, experiences, so whether it's um, academic competitions or sports, music, missions trips, clubs, again, depending on student interest. Okay? We were, we're wanting to specialize in what you are interested in. In 10th grade, that's when they focus on career planning, so doing different inventories to find out what your interests are, what your strengths are, and um, a lot of this is done in the Bible class. Okay? And there's a whole curriculum on, on, on giving kids um, exposure to different careers and, and just trying to find out what is a good fit for them. Uh, 
in 11th grade. That's when the university uh, application process really um, uh, begins. And then that's when, when uh, there would really be help in, in, in partnering with you, the parents, and the students and find out what is the best fit for your, your child, for you as a student. So looking at the different universities available and, and walking through the application process. And then, of course, finally, 12th grade, all the hard stuff's done. You just relax all year, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that 11th grade is the most difficult year, but 12th grade is still really important because then there, that's when you really focus on transitioning and think about how do you get ready to go to USA or Canada or wherever. And one of the things that, that Morris and Tai Jung does really well, which we would once again be able to partner with them, is having the seniors transition retreat, where they have someone who's an expert on third culture kids come in and just really help them with this transition um, period and how to get ready for um, the next phase in their life. So there's probably a lot of words here, but I think the main message is there's a lot of experience here. I'm thankful for being part of the system and how they are willing to do what they can to support us here at MAK to make sure this is successful. And, and I hear some worries like, well, it's, it's a new program, and will it be good? And, 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 and we don't want to be guinea pigs. I think we need to think about, this is a 50-year-old program, and there's so many things which are already established. And um, one thing which I was talking with uh, Mrs. Liu, and she kind of, you know, our PR manager, she kind of put this in perspective, is if you think about your firstborn child, and just how, I know for us, AJ, our oldest, I have maybe a thousand pictures of him. <laughs> My number four, Matthias, I have maybe ten. <laughs> but our first one, we just, we do what we can to make sure they are, are, are successful and healthy and happy. And I think here, it's the same idea. We want to make sure this is successful. And we've got the, the experience and, and the resources to do it. And what we really need is just us, uh, your support and, and your help in, in knowing how we can do this well. Because we want to partner with you. And we want to give your kids um, what they need to be successful in life. Because we have that common goal, right? It's all about the kids making sure you guys are successful and well-equipped to, to dynamically impact the world for Christ. We've got that common goal, and then we can work together to do that.